So first thing you need to go into your scene and just make sure you don't have any layers. It would have this little green dot. See this little green dot here? That means there's a layer. Just go in and so that you don't have any of those green dots or red dots or any dots. All of the hair, this was all different parts. I think I can probably separate them. You can separate them and see all the different parts of the hair. Anything that you want to color the same color, you can just join them together. See the belt is 93.6K. All of these are very high. So we have 2.34 million and that's pretty big. So we want to try to lower the size of the sculpt. Now, of course, when you decimate, that's here. And I don't want to be too confusing. Just remember, you can always decimate any mesh. And what that does is it brings this number down. Right now the hair is at 400K. So decimate will bring that number down, but eventually it will sacrifice some of the detail. So it's kind of like a balancing act. Let's see what happens if I decimate it. So I'll go here, miscellaneous, and decimate. Okay, so we decimated once, and it still looks pretty good. And now it's at 200K. We can push it, oops, and try it again. We are getting a little bit of warping, so that's why I have it at 400K. So the collar is 103K, and that definitely doesn't need to be that big. So I'm going to bring this down maybe to 6,000. The belt is also pretty simple. So we'll decimate the belt. I can go down quite a bit, maybe to there. And the skin is 500K, but we have a lot of details in the face. So let's see what happens if we decimate it. Oh, it still looks pretty good. I don't think I noticed much of a quality difference. Also, let's turn off post-processing save ourselves some of this computing power. The shirt is 126K, so that can definitely be decimated. So I'm not gonna go through everything. Just go through your model and figure out if there's things that you wanna decimate, but just know that it will affect some of the quality of the details. That's pretty good. I decimated it, at least it's down to 1.2 million, which is still quite high, but it's a lot more doable. We don't need any of these lights or anything, so I'm just gonna go into the scene menu and I'm just gonna turn off all these lights because we don't need them anymore. I'm gonna get rid of this floor and actually we can get rid of both floors. So now we're at 1.12 million. So the belt, collar can be together. Do we do the headband? Headband and the shoes are matched. So next, just go through and make sure everything is labeled so that you know what it is. So once everything is labeled, let's go here. You can export all. We don't need the PBR paint because it's not gonna take that information anyway. So just vertex colors. And then you do export GLTF. I'm going to export this to my computer. So I am using the Jug Free Dave Blender Studio. I think it's really good to have your own backdrop and lighting and things like that. So I have mine available on Gumroad. It's $5. I appreciate the support if you do get it. If not, you don't need it. Blender will look like this when you first open it up. So you'll just have to, so you hit Shift A, Shift A. You go to mesh and then plane and then you add a plane and then go to your controls over here and you can make them bigger just do scale and you can scale it up so at least you'll have some sort of floor i would advise getting my blender studio it's on my website just because it'll make everything so much easier so this is what blender studio will look like will look like so on this window i just move everything around this window i press z and then i go to rendered so let's bring in our file all you have to do is go to file here import gltf so the title of my project in nomad was gal fin experimental but i had already brought this in to blender so it's probably down here somewhere see there's one here's two so this is what happens when you bring it over at least on a mac if you bring it over and there's a three after it that means there's multiple ones and it won't show up in blender so what i have to do is just rename it so i'll put gal demo and i want to get rid of that three get rid of that three so now we'll go back into blender there we go gal demo so we'll tap on that it's 49 megabytes 50 megabytes import and there she is I'm just going to zoom this in. 
all these lights are already here. You can go in this panel on the right and you can, you know, change the lighting. You can change the color of the background, the floor, and you can do this with anything that you make in Nomad. You can bring everything in the same exact way. So what you want to do is go in and let's say the hair. So if we look at this, her hair is really shiny. So she looks like, you know, like a toy. So just use this little world over here on the right towards the bottom. You can just play with these. So roughness affects the roughness. Now when I lift that up, now it's way more rough. Obviously metallic, just like Nomad. There's lots of other things to play around with. Um, have fun experimenting with those. Her skin is a little oily. So we'll tap on the skin and then we'll do roughness as well. Something like that. Also, as you can right click or a two finger click and some options should come up and do shade smooth. Sometimes things will need to be shade smooth. Everything looks good here, but just keep an eye out because sometimes renders can look a little funny. They'll look kind of pixelated like a, like a disco ball. You just have to do a smooth shading. Maybe you want some things like metallic, like I'll make this little guy metallic, kind of like a metallic apple. You can change the colors of things. If you want to change the colors, go to base color, tap that and just change it to RGB. Right now it's just taking the color from that we brought in, but now it's a base color. So now you can change it to whatever you want. I'm just going to undo. So then you would just go through and just adjust any of these things that you want. It's zero, zero kind of goes back to the orthographic camera. There's lots of things. I would definitely look into learning more in Blender. Everything is like shortcuts on keys, so it's very hard to learn, unfortunately, but it's really fun to play around with and it's definitely worth it. So once you have something that you like, go over to this little camera right here on the right side. So go over to that little camera, max samples, maybe do like 500, 600. That's usually pretty good. And then just go here, render and render image. And one thing to note, if your, if your sculpt is out of focus, then just zoom out on the bigger screen and then tap this camera. And then instead of that little world, it's, there's a little camera thing here. So if it's out of focus, just go here and turn off depth of field. So then everything will be in focus. And if you want to play with the focus, you can just play with all this stuff in depth of field. You can get it so she's a little bit in focus, something behind her's in focus, just like a camera. And then you can go to render and you can render your image. And once it's finished, it'll just show up here and then you hit image and then save and you have your image. I'll close this to cancel. I'm going to show you a final render of, of what I did. I added an image in the background. There's so much you can do with Blender, but it would just, it would literally take forever to try to go over it. And I'm not the best at Blender. I'm still learning myself, but uh, this is pretty much it. Hopefully you guys learned a lot. And if you guys got through that class, again, I am very, um, I feel very fortunate to have students that believe in me that much and can hang with me that much and just have the focus and the drive to make these sculpts because it's hard, but th this is what it takes to be able to do the really fun stuff and cool stuff. It's just focusing on little bits, piece by piece, putting it all together. And it's always just amazing to do it in Nomad and then to bring it over and to render like we can in Blender. It's just icing on the cake. All right. Keep drawing, keep sculpting. I'll see you all in the next video. And don't forget to post if you and if you do this, don't forget to post them in Skillshare. You can post them in the the class projects. I would love to see. So please post them. See you guys in the next one. Buckle up, Buttercup. Welcome to the next level. I'm Drug Free Dave, an artist with a passion for 3D art. I graduated from the School of Visual Arts in 2003 in New York City, and art has always been an integral part of my life ever since I can remember. I've always had a deep desire to create 3D art. Sculpting on the iPad Pro has opened up new possibilities for me, and I'm excited to share my knowledge with you. I love teaching and exploring innovative ways to create art with Nomad Sculpt, a 3D sculpting application available for iPad, iPad Pro, and Android tablets. This advanced class is designed for those who want to create full human figures, clothing, accessories, sort of Disney, Pixar style, so anatomical, but not like anatomically anatomical, you know what I mean. Expect a thorough exploration of how to use and combine simple shapes and tools so you can be excited to tackle complex sculpts 
rather than afraid to attempt them. Together, we'll cultivate problem-solving skills and a smooth workflow so you can make sculpts you can be proud of. Are you ready to take your 3D sculpting and your workflow to the next level? Join me in class and we'll get you past the plateau and onto more complex characters that are more than just cute little round creatures, which is my favorite. But at some point in time, you gotta try something that's hard. You can also export your 3D file for use in other applications like Blender for animation, Cycles rendering, and a whole lot more. Buckle up, Buttercup. Welcome to the next level. <laughs>